Good afternoon to all the participants of uh, Pinoy Park Challenge and to my fellow veterinarians, good afternoon. I am honored to introduce to you our next speaker for today, my colleague from Biocheck. I'm Lu Arukan, by the way, your regional product specialist here in Asia. So our speaker for today has some more than 15 years of experience in veterinary diagnostics for manufacturers in a sub-Saharan African region, specializing in animal production and companion animal sector. She also works with our government institutions, together with the veterinarians and the, and the farmers, to set up diagnostic protocols to be able to manage and prevent disease outbreaks. An expert in veterinary diagnostics, specifically in the field of microbiology, serology, and molecular diagnostics. An experienced small animal practitioner. And uh, she used to work also as a product specialist for equipments, for diagnostic kits, and for reagents. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce uh, Biocheck's Global Business Unit Manager for Swine, Dr. Kobe Valentin. Kobe? Good day and thank you for the kind introduction. Today I would like to discuss the biosecurity aspects around African swine fever, review the successes and talk about how we assess and verify biosecurity aspects in the fight against African swine fever virus. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on explaining the virus as I'm sure you already know this. So but let's have a look at why African swine fever virus is such a threat and why we should do everything in our power to avoid it. The virus is highly contagious and infectious. It's easily spread between wild and domestic pigs and it's extremely environmentally resistant. It is spread by the movement of people and inanimate objects such as vehicles and farm equipment. The clinical symptoms are not very distinct from other swine diseases. So by the time we have serologically confirmed that it is indeed African swine fever, the disease is often spread to other areas. It can decimate swine populations and can have a mortality rate of up to 100%. We can see pigs dying in as little as 2 to 10 days post-infection. There is no cure and no safe commercially available vaccine yet. You will see that I listed not zoonotic as a threat. Although it can indeed not infect humans, I do believe that if it was a zoonotic disease, we would take more care in trying to stop the spread of it. Since 2005, 74 countries have reported African swine fever cases. 10 countries have reported the occurrence of the disease for the first time while 13 countries have reported the spread to new areas previously clear of African swine fever virus. The disease threatens the global swine population, well as well, wild as well as domestic, and so threatens food production on a global level. African swine fever is not only the problem of the swine producer, it's a problem for every citizen of the world. This slide depicts the spread of the disease across the world in the last 17 years. As you can see, the situation is dire, and if we don't take action, we will have an entire swine population at risk. Since the start of the outbreak, the Philippines have managed to curb the spread of the disease, and successes can be contributed to the following and other factors. The implementation of the very effective 1710 protocol has been a huge success. For every case, all animals in a one kilometer radius were culled. Strict movement protocols were put in place in a 7 km radius around the area and increased monitoring and surveillance in a 10 km radius around the affected site. The importation of domestic and wild pigs, their products and byproducts, were banned from all African swine fever virus positive countries. The avoidance of uncontrolled swill feeding helped to stop the spread of disease through this very risky channel where diseases often spread. Monitoring and surveillance was increased, and that paints a clear picture of the situation and points out possible routes of spread of disease. Biosecurity practices were adopted and enhanced, and farmers and the general public were educated on the risk and the spread of the disease. Why is biosecurity important on the pig farm? The best way of dealing with African swine fever is to avoid it completely. Keeping it out should always be our first priority. 
Improved biosecurity will also decrease the risk of other unwanted pathogens and diseases. It enables us to control and manage the spread of pathogens on the farm between units. Improved biosecurity reduces the risk of transmission of zoonotic disease, ensuring the health of pigs, farm workers and farmers. We see an increase in key performance indexes such as average, average daily weight gain, feed conversion rates and time to slaughter, and we see a decrease in management and veterinary care costs as we reduce the pathogen load. Let's review some high-risk areas on the farm where pathogens have the best chance of entry. Land. Is our farm secure from the movement of wild hogs or are we in close proximity to other swine farms? Are our buildings clean and free from organic matter that can harbour pathogens? Are the consumables, such as equipment and medications that enter the farm, clean and free of disease-causing agents? Are the humans that are moving past and through our farm aware of how they are able to spread the disease? Are our management procedures in place and sufficient to lower the risk for disease? How do we assess the risk areas on our farm? Risk areas are defined as the places and routes we can expect the virus to enter the farm. The first step in risk assessment is to identify the hazards or the possible entry points to the farm, such as deliveries, vehicles, pests, and human and livestock movements. The second step is to distinguish between real risks and perceived risks. For example, in South Africa, my risk for PERS is low, as we do not have this disease present in our country, but my risk for African swine fever is high as the disease is endemic and we have a lot of wildlife movement. The third step is to implement a mitigation plan and processes. Once you have identified your risk and the probability of your risk, what measures can you put in place to lower the risk? Final step is to continuously monitor, assess and verify and then adapt your mitigation plan. If your plan is not working, as the Philippines readies itself to join the Cartagena Protocol on Biosecurity, it has already put in place the following biosecurity practices. Effective deworming and disinfection protocols limit the prolificacy and the spread of unwanted parasites and pathogens. The construction of proper pens and housing puts the producer in control of what his livestock comes into contact with. Burying dead animals limits the spread of disease by pests such as rats, foxes and monkeys and increases general sanitation and hygiene in the area. Avoiding uncontrolled soil feeding limits the spread of disease through food as the origin of these foodstuffs are often not known. Controlling movement is possibly one of the biggest factors in curbing the spread of African swine fever virus and if we combine this with education, of the producers, the workers and the general public, we can stay ahead of this deadly virus. What are some of the other biosecurity practices we should be striving for? Access control points can allow us to verify that vehicles and people are clean and lowers the risk of infection. Corrective action can be taken before entry into the facility. Improvement of internal biosecurity will limit and prevent the spread of disease inside the farm. Pest control is often overlooked as a very important vector for the spread of disease, not only on the farm but also to nearby farms. Feed deliveries pose a large risk to spreading disease between farms and feed can also be contaminated. Improved housing makes it easier to implement, monitor and maintain proper biosecurity protocols. Disease management decreases the risk for all diseases and improved sanitation and hygiene lowers the risk immensely. Deliveries of medication and vaccines can hold a risk of disease, so verifying that these items are cleaned properly on arrival reduces the risk of spreading disease. Controlling effluent in a humid and wet climate such as the Philippines can greatly reduce the risk of transmitting disease from nearby areas. Transport remains one of the biggest risks to biosecurity, and should be restricted, controlled, assessed and verified so that correction act, corrective action can be taken. So now that we've established the biosecurity goals that we would like to achieve, let's take a realistic look at the roadblocks we face. 
65% of pigs in the Philippines are produced by backyard producers, often impoverished and prone to think that the extra biosecurity measures might be an added expense as they are often not aware of the benefits it has to improve production. Poor infrastructure makes the implementation of biosecurity difficult, practices difficult. Geographical proximity is a roadblock if entire communities are not committed to improving biosecurity. Entire communities should be educated on why biosecurity is important and producers should be educa educated on how to implement, assess, verify and maintain protocols in order to limit the diseases as well as improve key performance indexes. Weight markets are a large concern for biosecurity as live animals are transported to these markets, often without much consideration to the origin of the animals. The risk of spread of disease from these markets are used as many people pass through them and there's little control as to who comes in or what leaves the market. So once we have set up these biosecurity protocols, how do we verify that they have an impact? How do we know if it's really clean? The first step is to do a visual inspection. Does the area look clean? Although this is quick and easy to perform and at no extra cost, we are not able to verify cleanliness on a microbial level. Point of care monitoring devices such as ATP monitoring systems are now available to primary producers. These are easy to use, fast, on-site, and gives us an indication of how much organic matter is on the surfaces we test. Although these tests are not directed at a specific pathogen, studies shown that there is a direct correlation between the amount of organic matter and pathogen load. The higher your ATP level, the more pathogens are present. This gives a better representation of what is happening on a microbial level and corrective action can be taken. Microbial testing is performed in the laboratory and gives us an indication of exactly which pathogens are present. Although this is the most reliable form of verification, it takes time and it's expensive and not always easily accessible to the producer. So what is ATP then? ATP is adenosine triphosphate, the energy component of all plant and animal cells. It's present in all organic matter and is an indicator of the presence of organic matter that might not be visible to the naked eye. Organic matter serves as a reservoir for bacteria, yeasts, viruses and spores. The test principle works as follows. The ATP in the organic matter on the surface gets picked up on a swab. It then reacts with a reagent and releases the energy in the form of light. It works on the same principle as the bioluminescence of a firefly. A swab is placed into the reader that reads the amount of light produced and gives a reading that represents the amount of organic matter present on the surface in a few seconds. This allows for a corrective action to be taken immediately should the reading not be satisfactory. This tool can be implemented in the daily routine on the farm in different areas such as the houses, vehicles, on protective clothing, farm equipment, drinking nipples, feeding troughs, as well as on the hands of workers. With this tool, you are able to get a real-time reading on how clean a surface really is and determine if the object poses a biosecurity risk. Should the cleanliness of the surface not meet your expectation, you are able to implement an immediate corrective action. Why is it so important to verify our biosecurity protocols? It is a measure of how well the actions were performed and gives us an opportunity to take a corrective action if not satisfactory the first time. We are able to set baselines for different applications and monitor that we maintain the cleanliness over a prolonged period of time. We are also able to make small changes to protocols in order to continuously improve our biosecurity. We can identify risks before they become disasters. We are able to generate data and prove our biosecurity efforts to authorities and other interested parties such as insurance companies. By improving our biosecurity, we reduce our risk of unwanted pathogens, and so we can continuously improve our production outputs and reduce the costs associated with disease management. Ensuring that we are able to sustain our efforts are key to maintaining su successful biosecurity. 
we must avoid becoming complacent in our routines. Biosecurity should be seen as an investment into the health of our herds, producers, as well as the public at large. Knowledge is power. If we understand where potential risks are, we can mitigate them. Access to effective verification tools allows us to track our efforts over a period of time. We need to aim to continuously train our staff to best practices, and we need to have contingency plans in place to reduce the influence in the event of an outbreak. So how does biosecurity benefit the producer? By reducing the pathogen load and events of disease, we can expect increased fertility rates, bigger litter sizes, and higher piglet survival rates. Healthy pigs gain weight quicker and with better feed conversion rates that lead to a reduction in feed, medicine, and veterinary care costs. These pigs grow faster and stronger, and the days to slaughter are reduced. We can clearly see the benefits of improved biosecurity and how the verification and monitoring can assist us in increasing profits. Higher key performance indexes equal higher profit. In conclusion, biosecurity is an investment into the health and the profitability of the herd. Risk assessment is necessary to avoid disease outbreak and all that comes with it. Proper biosecurity need to be implemented as per the risk factors in the specific area. Assessment and verification with tools like ATP monitoring is instrumental in ensuring that biosecurity protocols are correctly implemented, sustained and approved on, and that corrective action can be taken in good time. Improved biosecurity leads to increased key performance indexes and increased profit. Thank you kindly for your time. I hope you found this presentation insightful. BioCheck. Healthy animals are efficient producers of healthy food. So, monitoring the health status of animals is essential to identify trends in the immune status of animals, to detect pathogens in an early stage, to evaluate the effect of intervention schemes. BioCheck Smart Veterinary Diagnostics, the animal health monitoring system. BioCheck offers ELISA and qPCR diagnostic test kits, the BioCheck ELISA assay robot, Bear, the BioCheck monitoring software. How does BioCheck work? Well, it's very simple. The veterinarian regularly visits his clients and takes serum samples from the animals. Those samples will be sent with a barcoded submission form to a veterinary lab. The laboratory receives the samples, scans the barcode on the barcoded submission form containing all relevant information about the samples, automatically transferring this information to the system. This is the bear, the BioCheck ELISA assay robot. The laboratory technician loads the bear with serum samples, presses start and walks away. The test will be complete within three hours. After validation of the test results, the data is automatically stored in the cloud. There are different reports available. The results are now available in the BioCheck monitoring software in which previous data can be compared with new data. BioCheck monitoring software offers immediate access to results, reports, and statistics anytime, anywhere, with a laptop, tablet, or smartphone. BioCheck Smart Veterinary Diagnostics has a lot to offer. Interested to learn even more? Then don't hesitate to contact us. For more info, biocheck.com.